and I own Stitchers TV, which is a sewing channel and DIY, sewing and DIY style channel on YouTube. And I was asked to come here just to talk about how I got into having a sewing channel and, um, and how it sort of changed my life. Um, I started it six years ago and it's grown quite a lot. <laughs> and brings me lots of nice things, except money. <laughs> oh, no, but, it brings, but it brings me lots of really wonderful experiences. So I'm gonna go right, 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 right back. So I can blame my mum for my interest in sewing. Um, my mum uh, used to work for a makeup company called Coty, and she used to make the makeup bags back in the 60s. Uh, and this is before I was born. So she would do piecework at home, sort of churning out loads and loads and loads of these bags. And I have a bag here. So this is the very bag that, that my mum used to make loads and loads of. And um, I'll pass it around. And it's sort of barely touched from, from when she used to make them. She also worked for a company called Betty Lou, who used to make little powder puffs bags um, and inside there's still some spare handles oh, and it's got oh. that that smell so I can pass that around <laughs> and have a sniff because that's really nice. So so my mum and my dad were both very creative. My dad would go on holiday to Italy and come back and he would have built an extension or something and, um, and my mum she would always make all of our clothes and do all this piecework and then in the 70s she started working for this woman called Priscilla Lobley who used to make paper flower kits, which are very popular now. And in the 70s, they were very popular. They're actually in the archives of uh, the v &A. So I was alive at this time, and I was actually recruited as, as one of the workers. And the way I used to make my money was by winding uh, the wire down uh, the stem. We used to have to make the samples as well as the kits. And I have memories of our living room, which is probably like the size of this, with layers and layers of different coloured crepe paper. And then my mum would have, you know, like uh, in the olden days, they had those pesticide things where you had to sort of pump it. And then, I don't know, you did something like that, didn't you? But she had water in there. And what they did was they laid up different shades of uh, crepe paper. And when they sprayed the top, the colours would run through. And unfortunately, you can't see it very well, but it kind of gave a kind of marble effect on the... Uh, the papers are ah, yes and also <laughs> my claim to fame is I would have wound wire on one of Maria Osmond's um, is it 5,000 I think 5,000 paper roses that, that were oh. <gasps> oh yes yes it is oh my god <laughs> well, that's well, amazing no, it actually no, is that's no, 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 it, it is it really really is no I don't need to see it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it'll make me cry. Oh, wow, look at oh. that. It actually is, yeah. Come on, look at that, gosh. Yes, so my, my mum used to work for this woman, Priscilla Lobley, and she got a commission to do 5,000 paper roses for Maria, I don't know if you know who Maria Rosman is, yeah. Maria Rosman's concert at, at Wembley, and I would have been involved in that at the age of about, I don't know, seven or eight or something. Before I had my sewing channel, I've done all sorts of things. I've worked uh, for a small uh, manufacturer that used to make stuff for, I don't know if you would know, uh, Helen Story, Cameron yes. Boyd, yeah. um, and um, Grand Stroke, Stroke? Yeah. I don't know, and Jean Muir, which you would have heard of, and Jaeger. So I used to work for this woman, and we used to do wedding dresses as well, but mainly I was designing the wedding dresses. And I used to produce small collections that I would take around to boutiques in the old days. There used to be boutiques, you could walk in, show them samples, they say we have five of those, six of those, ten of those. I'd go away and make them and you know, then they'd sell them. And then I got into doing a little bit of costume jewellery, which sort of got a little bit popular really. Still didn't make any money. Um, <laughs> and it appeared at ES magazine, I don't know, it's not that big a deal I suppose. Um, we would make um, in, in this space, I did, I did it with a friend of mine, and we would use sort of religious icons and add bits and pieces onto them. And then I, I made furniture and mirrors, and they appeared in L Decoration. Uh, actually, I, did, I, I used to supply liberties, and one year I did a delivery, 
and I killed myself doing it because I used to make all the stuff myself. And then I got a phone call and they said, oh, we've just put them all in the Christmas windows. Can, can we have a repeat order, please? And then I had to do it again. Anyway, so I used to sell to Liberties. I've made stuff for George Harrison and for props for films. Because, as you will know, and you will know, once you're a creative person, you, you know, it doesn't matter what the medium is. It could be sewing, it could be welding, it could be stained glass, it, it could be anything, you know, the need to be creative. There's actually a dead bun problem <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, this is in uh, Marie Claire, because I used to sell to Agnes B, when Agnes B wasn't a great, big, enormous uh, company. Um, Agnes B in Paris. Um, we used to sell costume jewellery too. Uh, was this yeah. the 90s? Was this the 90s? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was late, the 90s. 90s. Yeah, 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 or mid, mid yeah. 90s, yeah. So there we go. So that's pre-Stitchless <laughs> TV. I mean, there's loads more, but you know, we'd be here all night. So now, Stitchless TV. So the reason why I started Stitchless TV which is a sewing and DIY style channel on YouTube, is a very naively, um, about seven years ago, went to a production company that just happened to be one of the biggest production, TV production companies in the world. <laughs> called Zod well, then it was called Zodiac Media Productions. I think it's called something else now. They're in West Kensington. And I went there and I sort of pitched to them and I said to them, look, mate, you're really missing a trick because for every single um, cookery format you have for TV programs can absolutely be applied to sewing and, and craft programs. And it's, it's a real kind of growing industry, it's becoming really massive in the States and I would like to be the Jamie Oliver of the sewing world where we get fantastic ingredients which means fantastic beautiful fabrics and make really simple clothes and end up with, you know, and make, yeah, really simple clothes. Hello. <laughs> they said I should go to one of the shopping channels, but then one of the producers, she was really lovely, she said, if you're really passionate about this idea, and if it's not necessarily about the money and that, but, you know, you really believe in this, why don't you go and set up a YouTube channel? So uh, I did. <laughs> so six years ago, six, just about six years ago, I set up Stitchless TV. So, Stitchless TV doesn't quite have 5 million views, but it's not far off. And 61,000 subscribers, which in the world of YouTube sewing, is, and, and in the UK, isn't bad. If I was in America, then it'd be a lot higher. Yeah. So, we have now, so each one of these thumbnails, so this is going in chronological, is that in date order, mm -hmm. chronological? Yeah, so they're going in sort of chronological order. I think I've got something like 150 sewing videos, and sometimes we do a bit of DIY style. So the one that went up in the early hours of the morning, um, this morning, uh, was about, uh, do you know that you can make glasses smaller by, um, you know your glasses that you have on? Okay. I watched it. This year. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. If you, if you, have, if you have plastic framed sunglasses, because I had these really wicked Oliver Peoples ones, and they were kind of very straight at the front, and I don't know if it was because of that, they, 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 so they kept slipping off my head, and I just had this idea in my head, and I'm sure I heard it when I went to Cutler and Gross, as you do, one day, <laughs> um, when they were talking about taking out the lenses that the way they take out the lenses is by heating up the plastic. But I thought, well, they probably <coughs> need special machinery or something. But these glasses, I couldn't wear them anyway. So I thought, oh, I'll just have a go. So I switched on the kettle, I opened up the lid, I put these glasses over where all the steam kind of froths out. And I just sort of held them there and turned them around. I thought, oh, what if they'll bend? And they really bent. <laughs> and they, <laughs> so, so, so I bent them enough and held them in place until they cooled down. And now they're brilliant. And I actually prefer them because they actually slightly wrap a little bit and they don't come off my head. So not all of the videos are about sewing, but most of them are. So this one's about how amazing the ruffler foot is. The ruffler foot is amazing. It makes gathers and regular pleats. And sometimes we have competitions. Um, sometimes we go on the radio and talk about going on the radio. Uh, how are working? There we go. 
So loads and loads of videos, lots and lots of time. Don't ever think you're going to make a fortune on YouTube because you don't. If any of you are thinking, I'm going to be over there now. If any of you are, <laughs> are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, just do it because you're really passionate about sharing what you do. It's so liberating to have been involved in design and been all like this. It's like, oh God, she's ripped me off. Oh look, you know, uh, I'm, I had that idea first. To suddenly, you think of an idea, you think, oh my God, I'm going to film it and share it. And then you get these wonderful comments from all, like proper, all over the world. I recently did a competition where I say, come and look inside my drawers. And I don't mean my drawers, I mean <laughs> my drawers, my haberdashery drawers. So I get my haberdashery drawers out and I pre-select things that I don't mind people having. And, um, and then I get people to comment at the end of the video saying what they particularly like, why, and what they would do with it. Because in, in doing that, I'm really pushing up my rating. Because the more comments you get on a video, the more the complicated algorithms, nasty algorithms of YouTube help you and push you out there. And then that helps all your other videos being seen as well. Anyway, we do all sorts of things. We do things like we'll get a, a softball from the Tiger store and we turn it into a purse. We go to... Um, we went to William G, which is like a 110 year old haberdashery shop in, in Dalston, but I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm jumping my presentation. So look, lots and lots of videos, about 150 videos. They're all free, and I love them, and I love a lot doing it. Can I ask you a really question? Yeah, ask questions as, as, as we're doing it. Does it cost you money to put stuff on the YouTube? Okay, so it doesn't cost money in terms of I have to pay YouTube to go on there, yeah. but but this is my fault a little bit because my my videos um, they call them hero videos where it's really labour intensive high content videos. But if you do decide to do uh, a YouTube channel, uh, the new algorithms, the way that they work is. It's about frequency of upload. Mm -hmm. So the more frequent you can upload those videos, mm -hmm. the more high your ranking is. So no, it doesn't, but it, it costs a lot of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, until my kid goes to secondary school, and maybe halfway through the year of that, I have got the, the time. And then it needs to become a brand, and I really need to stop making money on it. Lastly, who's we? You talk about we. Yeah, I talk about who's we. we? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm really like, we. Who's me? <laughs> 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 I, it just feels too like ego, you know. Like, oh God, I, 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 me, I'm really brilliant. So do you but shoot everything? Do you do yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah. So do you not have somebody do the no, no. <laughs> so, happened? so the other thing is, so amazing. Not only. Um, Okay, so when I started out, you know, I didn't know anything about social media, really, did I? No, I didn't. And actually, I didn't even have a proper phone. I was really like anti-mobile phone and, and stuff like that. And you see people around. I mean, it was six years ago, so it's different to now. Um, so I had to learn. I had to learn, you know, how social media works. It wasn't as much as it is now, but still. So the earlier films, I had a presenter coach, it's BBC friend. I had to pay them, presenter coach to teach me, and this is something that's really quite important actually. Um, when you go in front of a camera, you think, and I digress a lot, I'm really sorry, you think that you, if you want to be yourself, you just get in front of that camera and you're yourself. You're not. You're not. If you, if you don't have some training, you'll be amazed the amount of okay, so, um, um, you know that it, it doesn't you know you have to learn you have to learn it and and you know I'll, I'll be big headed and say it's a skill and I love it a lot so did I answer your question you do it all yourself I do it all myself so Amazing. I had to learn to do the editing as well Absolutely. so the Amazing. early editing is rubbish like rubbish um, and now I like to think it's a bit better yeah so that's stitches TV 
So what stitchless TV means is whilst having a YouTube channel in itself, because you monetize each video, so you, you probably, I don't know if any of you do actually watch YouTube, but if you do, when you watch YouTube and there's a little advert there, don't, don't click away too quickly, those okay. poor YouTubers, because that's how they make their money. They make their money by you riding out that advert, which I don't know if it's a minute or, or what, and they make a minuscule amount of money from it, but that's how they make their money. And any adverts that surround that um, video, if you were to click on it, then they get another little 20p or something. You know, it's, it's peanuts, but the, the 20p's all add up. You either, you either make videos and share for the passion, or you have like a long-term plan and you're building a brand, or you want to take them somewhere else. But if you want to take them somewhere else, that's another very techie conversation because YouTube doesn't like you taking people off YouTube. Mm. So opportunity. So what it, what it is, is that it brings opportunities to you. Because you say to people, oh yeah, I've got a YouTube channel, it's got nearly five million views. They listen. And if I didn't have that, they wouldn't listen.